I'm excited. Are you excited, Mike? I am. I actually am. Okay, guys. I got a secret play I've been saving for the Olympics, or possibly the Final Four. And it goes something like this. All right. Yes. We've got our bottom shelf uh, bourbon bracketology for March Madness. So we uh, hopefully pick some uh, some good stuff. Maybe some interesting things will happen as we try them. I think that I've had some of these. I know that I haven't had all of these. What we're going to do here, or the premise of this, is we're going to do our own little bracket of bottom yeah. shelf bourbons that are fairly easy or pretty readily available. Mikey picked these bourbons over here. I picked these bourbons over here and we ranked them. They're sitting here within, in the ranks that uh, we think that they should go into the bracket as, and that, that determines their seating for the bracket. We're gonna do head-to-head -head blinds. So, one person's gonna pour them, the other's gonna sample. We'll switch back and forth. You're not gonna know, we're not gonna know which one we're trying. I'm not Our first trying. criteria was $16 or less before tax. We were trying to find something about. that wasn't necessarily a, a well bourbon, right? Hope we were trying to get something that was above 80 proof. We have a couple here that are above 80 proof. It's a little hard to find that uh, for under 16. Well, they had to be bourbons. Well, yeah, they have to be bourbons. Of course. Right? Not necessarily a criteria. We're going in glass bottles. Not don't want, we, did, we weren't going for plastic, homeless hobo cheap. We were going for a little bit, you know, at least it has a nice glass bottle. Just so happens all mine are screw tops, it looks like, but not Mike. Mike's got one contender that's not a screw top. As far as our judging criteria, as we taste them blind, the criteria will be nose, flavor, and finish. And those will be graded on a scale from one to 10 for each of us. What we'll do then is we'll combine our scores, whichever during the head-to-head, -head, the blind head-to-head, -head, whatever bourbon scores higher, will go to the next round. But we decided to do it blind, that way we don't play favorites. So go ahead and start it off, Mike. Uh, describe what your number one seed is. My number one seed is JTS Brown, Partstown, Kentucky, Heaven Hill product, bottled in bond, 100 proof. I've seen it on shelves around town and I always thought it looked interesting and I always thought like, how bad can this be or how good could it be? This was $15.99, believed to be four years and older. Why'd you seed this one number one? Price and proof. So I, if, if I, I, I went with those two criteria. So, so these were, you know, higher proofs. This one was more expensive, and but it's sort of a combination of price and proof. Well that was my done. seeding criteria. Uh, continuing, this is uh, Erza Brooks 90 proof. It's not bottled in bond or anything. Lux Road Distilleries, and all of our bottles are from the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Uh, this bottle here was. $11.99, 24 months. So that's Airza Brooks, 90 proof. And uh, I wanted to get above 80 and I was glad that I could for that price point. Uh, Henry McKenna, 80 proof sa bourbon, sour mash. I've had other Henry McKenna products that were, you know, a couple notches above this, certainly. And I always liked Henry McKenna products. So um, I'm hoping this is a, this is a, uh, like a dark horse candidate to win the whole thing. McKenna, 80 proof, 36 months. This is also Heaven Hill. They're everywhere. They they're gonna figure large in this little competition of we'll ours. We'll see. Um, they have yes. a fairly high representation so far. Once we get into my side as well. Moving on, very old Barton. Uh, this is my number four seed. Very old Barton, 86 proof, four years statement. They it is believed to be four years. I've had 1792. I enjoy it. I've also had some other things from Barton, from Sam's Club, and from Costco or wherever that were rumored to be and confirmed to have been made at the Barton Distillery. This I'm expecting to be better than the Sam's Club version, but not quite as good as 1792. That's my expectations for this. It might come in well above or below those expectations. I doubt that it could be worse than the Sam's Club. But sorry, Sam's Club. It is what it is. And that's a shame because I have a Sam's Club membership and I don't have a Costco membership because they're on the other side of town. I used to have a Costco. Yeah. I, I, I quit going. 
And this is a good looking bottle. This looks so, like there should be a genie in it or something. Yes. Except a, for, I mean, it doesn't have the Willet neck on and, it. But and yeah. uh, one more notation about this. This is the 86 proof. This green, it's, it's not a rye just because it has a green label. It's crafted. I didn't look up what crafted means. I'm hoping it means darn good. All right. My lineup consists of J.W. Dant as my number one. My price on this one was $14.59 before tax. It is 100 proof, bottled in bond. Um, and I'm gonna have to look here at some of my other notes. I had them, I texted them myself. Joseph Washington Dant was a, a fairly well-known distiller apparently before this ended up getting bought by uh, Heaven Hill. So here's one of my Heaven Hill picks. Didn't realize it was Heaven Hill when I grabbed it. Uh, I'd seen this one on the shelf before, and like I said, I, I put it as my number one because under $16, bottled and bond, 100 and proof bourbon. Mm -hmm. That supposedly, it's a 36 monther. Interesting fact, he gained his popularity using a log still. He actually made his bourbon in a log. I want to try that. I and <laughs> so even though Heaven Hill has the rights to it, the name and apparently I guess it's the mash is sem it's supposedly I guess the same mash. They no longer do that process, obviously, because it's obviously it's mash produced and they're not just distilling in logs. That's a good story. My number two, Ancient Age ninety. I've had Ancient Age ninety before. It's it's a decent bourbon to have at the bar. It's good for I know normally for mixing, but. Its claim to fame is it comes from Buffalo Trace. It is the high rye mash bill that bears all the similarities to um, to Blanton's, to anything that, that uses that high rye mash bill. It, it has a little bit of a, a following as a, as a cheaper bourbon. If you wanna scrape by and, and, and sort of get some of that Blanton's or claim to uh, Buffalo Trace. It was, I have bought this for $9.99 before at Kroger, but this one was, a whole dollar more, it was $10.99. So not breaking the piggy bank with that one for sure. This is why it was my solid number two and also at 90 proof. My number three, Heaven Hill Quality House. So here's my second Heaven Hill product. I've always, I, 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 of all the, the bourbons and cheap stuff or whatever I've tried over the years, I've never tried this one. It looks almost identical bottle shape as the six year that was very sought after and, the, and also the six year bottled in bond. It is also charcoal filtered. As is Ezra Brooks. So we have two charcoal filtered. Uh, Ezra Brooks, sorry. What are you gonna be calling it by the time we're done? <laughs> oh, chicken cock. Ursa, hit that drink. You want some? <laughs> Get you some Ezra Brooks. Possibly a, up to four year age uh, bourbon in the, uh, in the blend. It is an 80 proof. I expect this one to be easy to sip. Don't know what I'm gonna expect for flavor. Um, this is why it's my number three. Quality House was my lowest priced one at $8.99. My number four, complete dark horse, pun intended. It is called Point Rider. Never seen this before. I saw it sitting on a shelf behind ping pong balls in a Kroger. Weighs in at $12.99 before tax. Kind of the colors of Jack Daniels or Jim Beam, but when I realized it when I got it home, the bottle is almost identical to H and Age. Not sure what I mean, so they're, they're sourcing their bottles from it. It was sitting right next to Jim Beam, which looked very similar to it on the shelf. Couldn't find a whole lot of information on it. It does say, I believe it's distributed by Sasrac and has the has info at sasrac.com on the on the <laughs> label. That's about it. Reviews out there on this, but I didn't really go into them. Bottled by Clear Springs Distilling Company, Louisville, Kentucky. So it is actually a Kentucky distiller. 80 proof. I don't know. I'm not sure what to expect out of this one. It, it should be easy to sip. It's cut. It's 80 proof. So these 80 proofers got a lot to live up to, to I think, to, to get to the ones that are 90 and 100 or even a year 86, I think it is, right? So this one's a big question mark. Folks, what'd you say the point writer? What's the story behind the point, point writer? The point writer is when they're, when they're herding cattle it's the horseman that's out in front of the group looking out for obstacles like snakes logs anything that can present a danger to the livestock it's that you're you're on point like in the military you know when you're first guy in the platoon in an infantry formation you're on point that's the point horse right or point rider point rider point rider and horse together i'm hoping yes. it's a closing horse yes. a closing horse yeah. there we go i'm hoping it's a closer or a cinderella
<laughs> yeah, Cinderella team. Yeah. yeah, my Cinderella closing horse for the bracket. I think this is the most expensive out of all of them at fifteen ninety nine. And then my cheapest is down here at ten ninety. Pushing the envelope, man. And then these are both eleven ninety nine. You're pushing the envelope. I you am. Got, you got a big number one seed upset coming That's your sweet. way. It's like a DraftKings when you're picking a team based off of the uh, what do they call that? Uh, where you have to you got a budget of fifty thousand dollars. I'm saying I got some. You got some more leftover budget on your fan. Yeah, duel, you know, on your fan duel team than That's I. That's another thing to think about. Here's your entries. Make it make it work. Dang. That's a great idea. Fantasy I Bourbon like League. Fantasy Bourbon League. Yeah. Just, yeah. All right. Start off with the one and fours. One and fours. Okay, one and fours it is. We're gonna start off with the one and four brackets. I think the first one up, doesn't matter if it's my one or your one, will either be the JTS or the JW Dant. And JTS would be going against the Point Rider yep. and J.W. Dant would be going against the very old Barton. That's a All right. That's a challenge All there. Right. And this is this is the they were the play in. <laughs> I'm ready to try some of these, especially that Point Rider. I can't wait. 